for us this morning of Hurricane Irma when it was a Category 5 storm, and it was a Category 5 for quite some time, setting all kinds of records. Well, when it was a Category 5 storm, it went over the Caribbean islands, including the island of St. Martin. A Colorado couple made it through that storm on St. Martin. Getting back to Colorado proved very difficult. John and Marilee Movis are joining us with their story this morning. They are just back from quite a trek getting back from St. Martin. Good to have you on with us this Thank morning. You. Thank, you. Thank you. So you've been back just over 24 hours, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, we got back uh, Sunday night, at, so a little bit longer than that, but Sunday night. Let's start by showing everyone some of the pictures. When you went on this beautiful Caribbean vacation, and uh, St. Martin is a gorgeous island beautiful. down there, and you have some photos that you took just before, because you did get a day of snorkeling in, we right? Did. We did get snorkeling. Okay, well, we're going to show that, the beautiful water there. When did you realize that this storm was coming right for you? You know, the, uh, the, the tracking before was that it was going to go northward. And so uh, we literally got a call at Tuesday night at 2.15 saying the eye was coming directly over us and to actually come down into the restaurant that they had fortified for everybody. And did you think at that time, we've got to get out of here? Or were you thinking, we'll ride this out? You know, I never, I honestly, I never felt unsafe at Oyster Bay. Um, they had it for a Cat 4 and a Cat 5. But uh, apparently this Cat 5 was uh, a little bit stronger than some of the other ones. Okay, take a look at this, and Marilee. This is the video you all took during the storm. And you were on the second floor. They moved you up from a first floor that eventually was destroyed. Uh, completely destroyed. Tell yeah. me about this video and um, how you were feeling when you took this video. Well, it's a good thing that there was not audio on this video <laughs> because not much anyway. it was pretty crazy. And we were just just really just saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, and it kept going. It kept going. And, um, and when you when you when you're sitting on the second floor and you're looking at the water on, right underneath your deck, um, it's uh, it's surreal wondering how far that storm surge is going to come up. But uh, we, I felt safe. I did feel safe. I, I, don't, I don't know why. That's why I was standing at the window videoing this. So. You were able to get some amazing video. We're taking a look at more of it here. So after this, this went on through the night. Uh, we see it get dark in a lot of your video. The next day, tell me what it was like when it finally stopped and where you were left trying to get home. Um, when it... When it stopped, we were trying to open our door to get out, and we could not open it because of the, the negative pressure. So negative pressure. So, so we had to wait. We had to wait <laughs> to subside a little bit longer. We were but, stuck. But when we saw, when we went outside and we saw this, I mean, that's our rental car right there. I think that, that, that blue yeah. one right in the middle. When, when we saw this devastation, I've never ever processed what it is. You know, at, you know, it's, you're you're kind of sheltered in Colorado. And uh, honestly, you think a, a cat one, cat two, cat three, these are palm trees going back and forth. And you see the devastation, but you don't really process it until you're down there. And it's, it, it looked like a war zone. Communication I mean, is wiped out. Communication is, is wiped out. The only people that have communication are, are going to be the, the Dutch military uh, and the police from Curacao. So uh, you were eventually uh, airlifted out of here, right? Tell me the story of how you got back, because many people and there are at least a thousand. They're now estimating uh, one to two thousand, maybe more, even Americans Correct. who were yes. on the island at the time. What happened? How did you get out? Um, we, 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 we had. We were fortunate to be at a resort, Oyster Bay, that had uh, connections, and uh, they were told by the local authorities, "Don't bring anybody to the airport. Don't bring any. No, nothing's going getting in. Nothing's getting out." And they chose to disregard the local authorities and get us on the bus and take us down where, where there was the line for the C-130s that uh, uh, Air Mobility Command had brought in. So, so you were taken out by uh, American government. They put you on a C-130 Correct. along with a number of other Americans. Americans. What were happening to, Americans. to other people from other countries, other tourists who were there and the locals who were there? Tell me what they were going through at that time too. Well, as we were standing in line, I don't know if, if you've shown that getting onto the plane. I think we have that if we haven't already shown it, yes. We had to show our passport, and if it wasn't American, they pulled people out, and there was people from Canada, there was South, South, Africa, Africans. South Africans. 
there were many other people. And, and so we felt very blessed that in three days the U.S. could put together that rescue. So they took you then. Uh, where did they take you and how did you get home? They, they took us to San Juan. Uh, by the C-130, um, when I knew, I, we, you didn't have a lot of, of uh, uh, communication through, the cell, th through your cell phone, but we did have text, and I knew they were taking us to San Juan, and I actually had called my daughter and my son uh, earlier, and then I texted them to let them know that we were going to San Juan, and I said, please make a hotel reservation for me. Please make uh, uh, airplane tickets back, and they did that. Well, I know that your heart is heavy for the people who are left there in St. Martin and what has happened there. You've started to raise money, uh, and you've started a GoFundMe page. What do you eventually hope to do with the money you're raising? You know, the, the reality is right now money does nothing for them. Right. I mean, one of the stories that I have is that I, I gave $40 to somebody who lost everything in our resort, and he gave it back to me and said, there's nothing to buy. I can't buy anything. There is no commerce, commerce there. There will not be commerce there for six months. So, so the money is going to be put in a trust for when construction materials and things come back, and then we'll give it to the Oyster Bay Resort to and be able to, to, and to their employees to be able to employees build it Employees literally saved the 148 of us that were there by staying there. Their houses were destroyed. Their families and came and, and... Anne Marie and Mincha were amazing, as was the rest it, of the staff. It's, wow. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking of their big hearts. And what we want to do is raise money for those that have lost everything. When other resorts, the staff left and... Correct. The... The people that were there were robbed because looters were coming in and taking everything. And we, we well, Oyster, we're so Oyster Bay contracted with a private security company that was able to carry a gun, and then we actually had armed security at the front of our resort, and uh, that that was unheard of. They went above and beyond. What a scary ordeal, Marilee. I know you're wearing the clothes. I'm that wearing, you were the wearing clothes that I. We we had were leave, told, leave virtually everything. Yes, we were told. Get your purse. If you have a backpack, put what you need in it. Be ready to go at any moment. We don't know if that will be today, tomorrow. Just be ready to go. And literally, when they started running up and down, people were just coming out and everything else, just running. Mm -hmm. And right in the middle of it, I was trying to help a 96-year-old woman who was unable to be evacuated because she's a Dutch citizen and she had fallen and hurt herself. And it, my heart just is right there for her because I don't know how she is going to manage. Um, many stories like that of you know, what can we do for them? And the, the, the hard part is, is there's such devastation here in the U.S. with, you know, with the forest fires and with uh, Harvey and with Irma down in Florida. And I just want to make sure that people understand that there's still Americans down there. We were fortunate to be in a resort that actually controlled the situation yes. very well, had the connections in town, and got us to the airport. But there's, like I was telling there you on the phone, so many there's others. so many people that went yeah. in B&B &B yeah. or or some of these other places Thank that are stuck. for coming in and sharing your story. And we'll, we'll put a link to that GoFundMe page and help, hope to help out in getting some help down there. Thanks again. Thanks thank for reaching out. So thank you so much. And I just want to thank the U.S. government for getting us out and all of our family and friends who made such an amazing effort to Thanks. get us out. Thanks again for coming Thank in. you. We'll Thanks be right back. Thank you. Thank you.